Good afternoon. My name is Bart Oates and I serve as president of the NFL Alumni Association. I'm a, a former NFL player. I played 11 years in the NFL for the New York Giants and the San Francisco 49ers. I played the position of center and um, have uh, been involved with the NFL Alumni Association um, pretty much since I retired as a, uh, as a player and became a, a former player. Uh, and uh, as such, the NFL Alumni Association is a not-for-profit organization. We're a 501c3 as well as a 501c5. We were founded in the late 60s by a small group of former NFL players with the support of um, the NFL. And um, our mission has been and continues to be caring for our own, caring for children and our community. And we want to be able to take the and leverage the uh, notoriety and the opportunity to play in the NFL to help with initiatives in our communities, um, especially uh, children who, as we know, are, are unable to, to help themselves. And um, we, are pre, uh, we are pleased, we are honored to be part of uh, the World Stem Cell Summit and the Wake Forest Institute of Regenerative Medicine Essentials course. Today, our uh, panel discussion is entitled Gridiron Champions and Their Unmet Medical Needs. And we are delighted to have two of the greatest NFL players with us for this discussion. Harry Carson, Super Bowl champion 21, nine-time Pro Bowler, member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, played his entire career with the New York Giants. And Ron Mix, another Pro Football Hall of Famer, eight-time AFL All-Star, and nine-time All-AFL. He, uh, he spent the majority of his career with the Los Angeles, uh, well, he spent the majority of his career with the San Diego Chargers and played one season with the Los Angeles Raiders. And with that, we'll move into the questions. So gentlemen, I want to uh, thank you for joining us today. I um, want to start with a couple of questions here. Uh, Harry, uh, former teammate, tell me about um, your time in the game, uh, where you played, and uh, tell me how long you played for. Well, I came out of South Carolina State, was drafted by the New York Football Giants. Um, in 1976, didn't really know what I was doing. They had to kind of point me in the right direction. <laughs> and um, they told me to go make tackles. And that's what I did. And I was pretty good at it. And um, I was also known at that time as one of the hardest hitting uh, linebackers <laughs> in the National Football League. And uh, I kind of took great pride in that, especially one day when I was walking off the field and this guy who was running back for San Francisco, San Francisco at the time, number 32, uh, O.J. Simpson came up behind me and he, he tugged at my jersey and he said, hey, Carson. And I turned around and I saw him, I said, hey, Juice, how you doing, man? He said, Man, I've been hit by some of the best, but I've never been hit as hard as you hit me today. And I really took great pride in hearing that. Uh, over the years, you, you find that even though you're dishing out all of these hits, <laughs> it's like Newton's third law of physics. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And so whatever I was dishing out, I was getting it in return. Yes. Well, what, what, hey, I can I can uh, just add as your teammate and someone that had to practice against you uh, in camp and uh, daily basis and preparation for games. Uh, yes, uh, it was. I we knew that if we could just survive our our summer camp and our practices and getting to the game for the offense, it was easy because once we had to worry about you and and, and your colleagues on defense, uh, everything else was easier after that. So. Yeah. Thank you. Ron, about, a little bit about you. Um, you know, you, you kind of uh, one of the initial AFL greats. And um, how long did you play and uh, where? Just uh, maybe a couple anecdotes that uh, you'd like to share. Oh, sure. I played um, 
from 1960 to 1969 with uh, the Chargers. The Chargers started off in 1960 in Los Angeles. And then I was out of football year. I had gone to law school at night when I was playing and had graduated and passed the bar. And I was out a year. And then uh, I got a call from Al Davis, who was then the owner uh, of the Raiders. And he said he had just traded for me. And uh, I know this sounds goofy after having played 10 years, but it was kind of exciting to be able to play again. You just, I, I didn't realize it something the game just kind of takes a hold of you yep. and uh, uh, be able to play with uh, Al Davis uh, who had been my position coach at the University of Southern California and uh, and the Oakland Raiders uh, and at a, uh, a salary that was beyond what I would have made as a first year attorney was very attractive the, the Raider thing I got to tell you guys a brief story their mystique is is unbelievable uh, let me give you an example. If I'm introduced, if I'm introduced to somebody and the introducer says, you know, you might be interested to know Ron played professional football. And the person will say, oh, who'd you play for? I said, well, I played for the Chargers for 10 years and the Raiders for two years. Invariably, they say, wow, the Raiders? I mean, so I don't know, it was the shallow part of me that wanted to play for the Raiders and have that identity. That, that mystique, yes. But you know what was interesting, particularly after hearing you and, and Harry talk about uh, practices and what have you and hitting hard, the dates I played is, is important. It's beyond just uh, background information because the game was so different then. It was so different in every aspect as far as the damage to the body. I mean, we had just, for instance, 35 man squads. You know, now they're, I think they're 53 man squads. Uh, we had Plus five practice, practice players. Practice I think now they have 10 practice players. Um, and um, uh, the practice sessions were brutal. Uh, we played six ex exhibition games at, uh, and so there was eight weeks of two a day practices, full speed contact, every practice then the season it didn't let up you know you said you got a respite for the season because you didn't have to hammer uh, in preseason with uh, training camp with uh, hair any longer the respite didn't happen in the season the coaches most coaches then and certainly the charger coach Sid Gilman who, who's he's in the hall of fame with Harry and me um, we practice full speed three days a week heavy hitting, heavy hitting. Uh, and, and because you had a limited size of a team, you had to play the entire game. And you also had to play special teams. And one of the horrific positions of playing on special teams is if you were an offensive tackle like I was, you were part of what was called the wedge and the kickoff return team. And the wedge is when the four big guys, and sometimes they locked arms, would be in front of the ball carrier who receives the kickoff and just runs straight ahead. I'm pretty sure the collisions were unbelievable. I'm pretty sure that Harry, as a linebacker, I'll bet he spent some times as what was called the wedge buster. Wedge buster. Full speed, 40 yards crashing into each other. It was it was such an injury, high injury prone position that it no longer exists the NFL banned it. It doesn't exist yep, anymore. That's right, they did. So there was, there was all those things back then and everything was different. I mean, uh, you know, now you see a team go into what they call concussion protocol. There was no such thing when I played. I don't think there was when Harry played. Uh, I mean, the protocol was uh, you knocked out. If, you, if the smelling salts revives you, then you're back in the game. So the, t the damages that players suffered to their body was just unusual. And it's not just, it's not just the impacts. It's the running, the jumping, the twisting, the lifting weights. Everything causes what we call cumulative trauma or repetitive trauma to the body. And it causes degenerative conditions in all the joints. And of course it causes uh, uh, 
uh, brain damage also. So, Ron, what 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 injuries, specific injuries, did you suffer while you were playing? I was very fortunate. I my, mine were all due to what what, what I mentioned is cumulative trauma. Like over the years, uh, I built up calcium deposits and bone chips mm -hmm. in my shoulders. So in 1966, I had a bilateral resection of the clavicles. Uh, I mean, reached the point where I could not lift my arms above the shoulders and I had no strength. And, and uh, But other than that, other than, than that, it was no specific surgeries. However, my body, like every other players, not just football players, every athlete, uh, uh, suffered from the cumulative trauma to every joint and including the, and, and including the spine. Yeah. Harry, I don't remember you ever missing any time playing. Uh, did you have any injuries that prevent you from playing? Well, Bart, apparently you weren't paying attention to the defense when you were with the I can't remember anyway. I tell you, um, you, you know, Ron was talking about uh, the preseason games, and uh, quite frankly, there were six preseason games. And so you wind up coming to training camp in July, <laughs> right after the uh, 4th of July. And, you know, it was full speed. And it was also um, in practice, everything was live. And so, you know, we had those exhibition games, but during the course of the week, you know, we would have live drills and so forth. One of the things that I carry with me, <clears throat> and I've had a number of in injuries, but one of the things I carry with me is, I don't know if you can see the shoulder. Uh, in 1980, in practice, I severed a uh, nerve going to the posterior deltoid muscle. And that muscle deflated or atrophied very quickly. And I wound up um, playing for another eight years with this just being the bone and no muscle to support it. And so, you know, that happened in, in practice. It didn't happen in a game. So, yeah. you know, so many things happen um, in the game and people are aware, but there's so many other things that happen in practice that nobody has any kind of awareness of. Uh, I sustained a couple of knee injuries and um, uh, during the course of a couple of seasons, I don't have any cartilage in my, in my knees. Um, and so now I've got arthritis, you know, in my knees, I got arthritis in my hip, hips. <clears throat> I still have the posterior deltoid muscle that, you know, when I, I, I was first diagnosed, they said, it might come back. <laughs> <laughs> might not. It, it never came back. It never. But you have to learn how to adjust and, and go with it. And, um, you know, it, it really is um, part of what you have to deal with if yeah. you to play. And it's not just on the NFL level. I mean, it's also on the college level, it's on the high school level and so forth. But Bart, Very the other true. thing is um, uh, I, I'm one of those guys who um, start talking, I started talking about players dealing with neurological issues. Yep, you've been, uh, you've been, you've been, very, been a very, very long time ago. Person. I mean, it was, when I started talking about it, it's just like, um, cause I was diagnosed in 1992 years after I left football. And so I figured that if I was dealing with post-concussion syndrome, there are probably a lot of other guys dealing with the same issue. And um, it was a result of those hits to the head uh, the con concussions that, uh, as um, uh, Ron mentioned, uh, those concussions, if you could survive the AMCAP where they pop it and stick it by your nose and kind of, <laughs> kind of you know, get you back to some kind of consciousness. And then they ask, how many, how many uh, fingers do you see? <laughs> 
You say you well, say three. You say three. They go. Then they go. That's close enough. No, I, I go. <laughs> uh, there's four and a half. <laughs> but no, it's it was rough. But no, oh, yeah, yeah, it, you're it right. It was the way it was the way that it was at that time. And mm -hmm. um, you know, there's so many players who had played the game who have dealt with the lingering long term term effects of injuries, but more specifically, um, injuries to the brain. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we played, you know, Ron played 60s and 70s. You played 70s and 80s. I played 80s and 90s, um, yeah. you know, and through those all those eras, that was a very physical type of game. Particularly, it was, you know, I mean, the game is still a very physical game, but it's mm -hmm. that physicality that we, we experience every day in practice and in, you know, you guys did these nine-week training camps of two a day practices, which was just, you know, today's an NFL player won't, won't have that much hitting in their, in a 10 year career. And yeah, yeah. what you guys had in one camp. So it's just, it is, it's changed a lot. And so, so Ron, so you had, you know, I mean, as Harry and I have a commonality with being teammates and uh, he was, he's been the, Harry's been the captain, uh, even for the 30 years that we've been off the team, you know, we haven't played, but it's, he's, he's still the captain. He's the guy that, Guys reach out to. He's the one that is. He's he assists guys. He helps guys, and um, it's really what I mean. He he's the epitome of what a team player is. Uh, Ron, we have a commonality. Is I also went to to uh, law school during the nights when I was playing, and um, so I, I understand and respect uh, all the sacrifices you made in in doing that. And and um, what what are some of the injuries that you find your body is experiencing? You know, you talked about your clavicle. Any other any other issues that um, that are you having? Well, first, let me tell you guys something that's interesting, and I think Harry will find it interesting. It has to do with the brain traumas. Uh, the, the medical experts have determined that it's not just a concussion, a single concussion that's been diagnosed that's knocked one out or three or four, but it's just the repetitive trauma to the head uh, on every time you every time you hit. And um, uh, a, a brain injury clinic in Southern California did a study of 115 former players to determine what level of brain damage, if any, did they have. 113 had brain damage at, at some level. And then out of curiosity, they decided, let's see what position has the most brain damage. And I was surprised by the results. I thought it would be Harry's position, linebacker, I thought it might be uh, fullback, which had turned into kind of a blocking back over the years, full speed, long, big yards, uh, collisions. It was our position, or it was mm -hmm. offensive lineman. And the reason was we hit every play. And then I thought, wait a minute, we don't just hit every play. We hit, recoil, hit again. I mean, we might hit, and I was taught uh, during the time I played, that the head was the first point of, should be the first point of contact. It kind of makes sense. It's the middle of your body. You can generate all the force going right up through the center of your body. So it was kind of interesting. I was told that when I took the college entrance exam at USC, I was told I uh, uh, tested in the top like 1%. And at SC, we were taught, like everybody was taught then, that the head was to be the first point of contact. I absolutely know by the time, and SC was brutal. In those days, the colleges were brutal about the contact they had during the week. I know I was, I know by the time I left, I was no longer a one percenter. So what I'm saying, everything didn't happen just in the NFL. Yep. Cumulative trauma injuries, Career in college, start in high school. Unfortunately, they start with very young with Pop Warner football. I'm glad to see that most of the most of the, the teams in the country are eliminating that. But you ask about current problems I have. Uh, I have the, the same thing that they're not uni unique. I've got um, uh, early degenerative arthritis in every joint. I've got degenerative conditions uh, in in my neck. I've, I, uh, and time, over time, they got worse and worse. So by the time I was like 60, uh, in order to get a good night's sleep, in order to be able to work effectively, I started taking uh, serious 
uh, pain medications like oxycodone. And I, I tried to limit myself as much as possible. And I, like everybody else, it's not heroic. It's just like what we have to do. I, like every other player, learned to live with a certain level of pain. But if it interfered with me, say, doing my job as an attorney, and I couldn't work, then I'd, I'd take the oxycodone. I'd take pain. I'd take sleep medications to sleep. Um, and I tried, I tried just about everything. Uh, the neck got so bad, there were times that it was totally disabling, and I'd have to have steroid shots into the neck. Um, I tried chiropractic care. I tried acupuncture. I tried physical therapy. One thing that I, caught, that I came to believe I, I, is that they're fine. You, you feel kind of good after it while you're getting it, but it doesn't last long. It's just temporary. It's just temporary. Mm -hmm. So we need some long-term cures. We need yeah. some very yeah. long-term cures. Harry, how about you? What are some of the options that you've sought to, uh, for these conditions that you're experiencing? Well, um, what I try to do is just try to stay uh, physically fit, a lot of stretching, um, a little meditation, <laughs> um, a lot of cardio, uh, weightlifting. Um, I have utilized some um, medication to reduce uh, inflammation in my joints. Um, I think I'm kind of at that point now where uh, my, my sleep and my rest have been affected to some extent, but I haven't really gotten into, uh, you know, serious kind of medication to, um, you know, stay asleep. Um, it's just a variety of things. And, you know, when you reach an age of, you know, 60 something, <laughs> then you, you, you really start to feel it, you know, and you really have to be dedicated about taking care of yourself uh, physically. And that's what I've tried to do. Um, but, you, you know, it, it, I've sort of resigned myself to the fact that I probably will have some issues probably for the rest of my life. And I just have to get used to it. And, and um, Again, I don't want to take any kind of medication to become uh, a habitual uh, pill taker to get rest and so forth. Um, if there's an opportunity to um, clear up some of the things that I'm sort of dealing with, I, I have a, I have a one of those uh, machines that you kind of hang. Uh, upside down, you know, your feet yep. in the air, just to give myself some some space in my spinal cord area and so forth, and that helps a little bit. But uh, again, you you gotta you you gotta um, read, you gotta listen to other players and and what they're sort of dealing with, and you gotta do what is best for you. And yep. uh, if you are diligent about taking care of yourself, you know, you can ward off certain things, but um, at the end of the day, certain things will probably inevitably um, uh, be a part of your life for the rest of your life. Yeah, you know, well, there's that, right, there, I mean, there's that process of, of aging naturally, and I think, I think we all agree, having played many, all this, uh, more than 10 years, you know, that it was, you know, it's something that we have to live with, those uh, those conditions. And, um, you know, at, at the NFL alumni, um, we're just, we're firm believers in trying to find the, those types of uh, protocols, uh, those, those types of options that are going to help all of us who have many of the same, same types of conditions. Um, one thing that, that we do believe at the NFL alumni and, and is that regenerative medicine or cell-based therapies um, are a, uh, a real option uh, for many of the conditions that we've talked about. And there are a number of clinical trials underway and exploring these various options. And um, have any of you, uh, Harry, have you ever pursued any uh, regenerative medicine 
options or treatments? You know, I've been <clears throat> lately having some issues with my left knee and my left hip. And, you know, I've gone, I've gotten um, MRIs and um, you know, I've had some serious conversations with my, uh, um, with my doctor. And he has indicated that at some point down the line, we might want to visit replacing certain parts of my body, which I'm not all that big about because I want to. I, I want to leave with everything I came into the world with, except that posterior deltoid muscle here, uh, and that's there. It's just deflated. Yeah. But, um, I used to say years ago, before a year and a half ago, I, people asked me if I, you know, if you ever had a replacement. And I always said no. I'm I'm organic. You know. And then a year and a half ago, I had a knee replacement, so I can't say that I'm not totally organic anymore. Yeah. So, you know, we've kind of talked about the possibility of doing something, uh, maybe a shot that lasts, you know, 60, uh, six months, so forth. Um, I would like to, um, or I would hope that I can um, work with, in, with in, in some way to have some kind of treatment that's going to help the arthritis, the uh, hip joint that I'm sort of dealing with now, my knee, and um, not necessarily have to deal with the, um, the anti-inflammatory um, medicines that I'm sort of taking right now. So, right. You, you know, if, if there is something that um, I think I can use uh, I'm going to visit the, the possibility of, of using uh, restorative uh, medication if possible. And if it can, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of willing to try almost anything yep. to get back to a normal functioning individual. Um, well, I, that was, I mean, I'm, I'm Mike, I've had um, a number of regenerative uh, therapies. Um, I've had adipose tissue and then they refine it and down to the stem cells. And so with the theory that, you know, it's, it's cells from my body that are being injected into my body in a concentrated form that, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, as opposed to, you know, there's other ways of uh, regenerative medicine. Uh, Ron, how about you? What, what, where have you, uh, where are you in this spectrum and have you had any regenerative uh, medicine therapies experiences? Well, first, let me say that I, I, I join Harry in saying the importance of staying active. And I think that one thing that I've done that's really been beneficial is I've never stopped working out. Uh, like Harry, I mean, I continue to do stretch. I do cardiovascular. I, I lift weights. And, and you also have to naturally uh, give some attention to nutrition. And uh, uh, I'm... I'm pretty active for uh, 83. I mean, I'm pretty active, feel great. Uh, the regenerative, about three or four years ago, a couple of my friends uh, uh, and acquaintances told me that they had the stem cell therapy and, and that it was very successful. And I started to look into it. It's expensive because it's not FDA approval approved yet because there haven't been the double blind studies and what have you that is necessary. But I was gonna do it, but then about the same time, I gained some knowledge about uh, uh, hemp CBD oil. And I started taking that liquid tint tincture underneath the tongue. And I was so surprised at, at, at the benefits um, and it reduced and has reduced my joint pain by about 90%. They also have a tincture that uh, as a sleep aid, it's, uh, it's improved my sleep dramatically. I don't wake up multiple times anymore with, with pain. Uh, I'm not gonna say anything about the company that I may be associated with the name or anything like that, because I don't want this to look like I'm trying to solicit business. I'm just saying 
that that's another avenue that I think needs additional research. Uh, and I mean, it's very important because uh, right now, uh, insurance companies do not cover any CBD. By the way, hemp oil CBD is not the cannabis. It doesn't have the mind altering mm -hmm. substance called THC in it. Uh, so there's, 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 there's treatments out there that are benefiting so many people. We know they're valid. They just haven't been proven to the FDA yet. Let me name a couple. There's, there's certainly the regenerative stem cell therapy. There's hemp CBD oil, and there's hyperbaric oxygen treatment, which I've also had, which is, uh, I've had 40 treatments of, of uh, one hour of pure breathing, pure oxygen. And I really believe that it's helped me uh, with short-term memory and uh, with being able to focus and concentrate. So we need research in all those things, the type of research that will be accepted by the FDA so we can reach multiple people. Thank you. I have so, to- uh, I have Harry, to, go ahead. I've also uh, taken part in um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. I found that it did um, make me feel better. Uh, it, it is expensive, but it's also time consuming because uh, you, you know, you're going into a, into a tube 40 times and that's like two weeks of, of therapy. But if you are looking for something uh, to ease the pain and the, the issues that many athletes are sort of dealing with, then you're willing to, you have to be willing to try almost anything to at least be able to share with other players the positives and the negatives of, of certain treat, treatments. So, you know, I'm, I'm like Ron in that, uh, you know, you have to sort of look around and see exactly what's there and take whatever the best option is for you and uh, go with it. Yeah. So I've got uh, one final question. So we have uh, been the uh, World Stem Cell Summit. Um, there are thousands of uh, researchers, uh, doctors and others that are involved in this uh, community. And uh, when it comes to serving former NFL players, um, if you had one request to make of, of this body, uh, what would you what would you like to ask, or what would you say you would uh, request, Ron? Well, I would request that they increase their lobbying with with uh, federal state governments to get the funding necessary to conduct these very expensive studies. Okay, Harry, any any uh, request? I think more uh, attention should be focused on traumatic brain injuries uh, because it's not just uh, a sports or an NFL or a football issue, but you look at the number of individuals who are um, in the military who are dealing with uh, post-traumatic post stress disorder or post-concussion syndrome um, and on and on and on. I, I think there is this commonality uh, between individuals who have played sports and got hit in the head, whatever, and individuals who have been uh, subjected to a bomb blast or something like that. It's, it's the brain. And it, yeah. the thing that everybody has to understand is uh, the helmet protects the skull. It doesn't protect the brain. Brain. So I think more research uh, needs to be done. And, um, uh, and, I, and I think that uh, more and more um, entities should talk about or warn um, individuals that um, injuries to the brain is, is one of those things that um, uh, doesn't necessarily go away. It, it might linger at some point and manifest itself in your body, um, you know, down the road. Got it. 
Well, thank you. Um, Ron Mix, Harry Carson, thank you so much for uh, taking your time and uh, being on this panel discussion in front of this uh, very prestigious group and uh, appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thanks for asking us, appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Harry and Ron, appreciate uh, your input today and um, appreciate you sharing these uh, great stories. I think what we've learned today is that uh, many of us who played in the NFL um, had injuries and are continued to be plagued by, by injuries. And some of them we find uh, many years after playing. Having therapies in place to, to help us is extremely important. And we understand that regenerative medicine and cell therapies can, can help. And we're excited to be part of that process. We look forward to seeing more research in this area and, and uh, want to be a part of the solution. And we at the NFL alumni appreciate especially the opportunity to tell our story. Thank you for joining us today and many thanks to the many participants in this conference for the devoting your time and your energy to developing and advancing therapies and cures for patients in need. Thank you very much.